Hi, my name is Davis Jones, and I'm an MBA student at EDEC Business School out of Nice, France. It's one of the top schools in Europe, and for the last three months, I've been working with fellow MBAs, with professors from our program, and also with industry experts to build an industry ecosystem map of equity crowdfunding. Our idea is to figure out how the system's gonna work together, because we're going to create some recommendations for the SEC that talk about some of the risks to the system, what kind of regulation we think after all of our research needs to happen in order to make this system be great, etc. That's where we need you. So if you take this quick walk with me, I'll show you what we found and then I'll ask for your feedback about how you think the system will work and should work. All right, so first a little background about this whole thing. So what happened was, of course, in the 1990s, the internet connected people in ways that we never expected and totally changed the way that business was done, destroyed and created industries. And a key milestone that came in the crowdfunding uh, topic was in 2009. Because in 2008, Pabst Blue Ribbon put itself up for sale for the price tag of about $300 million. And a clever social media guy decided, hey, what if we could buy this business as a crowd? So he set up a website and was able to raise commitments of $220 million from small investors. I mean, investors each investing relatively little sums of money. Of course, this was not SEC compliant because there's been some laws on the books from the early, from the 1930s that prevented this. But the SEC and certain Congress people took notice. For example, Patrick McHenry, and then also three guys from, who called themselves the startup, startup exemption um, lobbied Congress to make equity crowdfunding legal. They saw the potential in this kind of thing. So they worked on this for a couple years and then in March of 2012, President Obama signed equity crowdfunding into law and that's where we are today. All right, so between now and the beginning of 2013, the SEC is gonna write the rules for equity crowdfunding. So what's happening is there's an industry that is forming really, really fast. There are some entrepreneurs who see this as an opportunity to create a whole new business. There are other businesses who see this as an opportunity to expand. And of course, there are a lot of people who are looking for money to start businesses and fund ideas. The scope of this is probably a lot larger than people are thinking too. It's not necessarily only startups who are getting involved, but people who own franchises, governments, and then traditional businesses. All right, so before we move on, it's critical to make a distinction. There's two kinds of crowdfunding. One of them is reward-based crowdfunding. So in reward-based crowdfunding, you make a commitment of some level to some sort of idea or project, and in exchange, you get a token or you get a reward back. This might be a product, it might be an early download of an ebook or something like that, but you don't get equity in the company. Then there's equity crowdfunding. And really, this should just be called securities crowdfunding. Because from our research, it looks like it's not only equity that's going to be available, but that people can issue things like bonds using the same technology. So in this case, you make a small commitment of money to some idea, and in exchange, you get ownership of some kind of security. So the key difference is what you get, which is a security versus a token. The other key difference is in the regulation. Of course, since securities are regulated by the SEC, this, the latter, equity or securities based crowdfunding, involves more regulation, has to be SEC compliant, has to involve people like FINRA. So that's the difference in the two systems. So one example of how equity crowdfunding might work would be, for example, a company needs to raise $500,000. So they agree to give 30% of their equity in exchange for $500,000. Now, if they can find around 3,500 people who commit an average of 15 of $150 each, you just do the math there, 3,500 times 150, you've got almost $500,000. So then each of these people would get around $150 worth of equity in the company. And that's an example of an equity crowdfunding completion. Okay, so now let's get to the map itself that we've created. So let's start with the whole issuers part of the ecosystem. Of course, what an issuer wants is to have a successful crowdfunding listening, listing, meaning that they raise the money that they need to keep their business going or to start their business or their project. 
So advisors are going to play a key part of this part of the ecosystem. These guys are going to play and girls are going to play many different roles. Who knows what they're going to play, it depends on the project. Sometimes the advisory might even be a part of the funding portal itself, the websites who facilitate the transactions. One thing we found in our research is that lawyers and accountants are not likely to play as big a part of the issuance as many people think. Um, a lot of lawyers think that this is going to be relatively standardized stuff and accountants also think that this is just going to be a flat fee type of thing where depending on the amount of money the equity the, or the issuer wants to raise they need accountants at different service levels. A big one in this area though will be PR firms and communication consultants. A lot of times people who specialize in social media. Communication is a huge part of crowdfunding and knowing how to use social media and PR is going to be crucial to the success of issuers. Another big one in this area are going to be event organizers. This is because there are going to be, there are going to, there's going to be a need for companies who bring investors and people with projects together so that they can discuss things. Some portals might be active in this space too. The biggest questions when it comes to the issuer part of the ecosystem are, are going to be with respect to the advisors. Like questions like, how much liability will advisors have for the advice that they give? Will they need to be registered broker-dealers? Will they need to have securities regulation or registration, things like the Series 63 or Series 65 licenses in order to advise on these things? So most of the questions here come around the role of advisors and what they're going to have to do in order to play their role. Alright, now let's look at the portals. Okay, so the portal's goal are going to be to have vibrant, cooperative communities of investors and people with projects coming together. One of the big controversies we found when it came to uh, funding portals was exactly how the education is going to work in funding portals. You guys are wondering what the noise is. This beautiful waterfall here. Anyway, some people, like some funding portals, believe that education materials should be standardized. Basically, there should be some kind of disclaimers and standardized materials that all investors have to go through in order to invest in their portals. Other people, uh, particularly people with teaching ex expertise, they say that the content has to be customized and tailored to individual users with individual levels of education and cultural backgrounds. These edu this education stuff is going to have to focus on things like how to integrate small equity listings and ownership of equity into your personal finances. How to use the sites, particularly how to exit your investments and use secondary markets so that you can exit the securities that you've bought. And then finally, it's going to have to be, these educational materials are going to have to focus on things like corporate finance. I mean, how do you use pro formas? What are forecasts? These kind of things. For sure, sites are going to have to work really hard on branding especially on social media, so that they can find their communities and build them. Another big task of all of these funding portals is going to be to build the infrastructure required to facilitate these investments. This is going to represent an opportunity for lots of existing financial services firms, people like transfer agents, also custodial services, and people who make secondary markets for those who have their investments. So what we took away from the funding portals part of the ecosystem is that the infrastructure is going to be a big deal when it comes to funding portals. Also, funding portals are likely going to have to be very focused in their scope so that they can attract specific kind of investors with specific levels of education and interest. Also, there's a very interesting thing when it comes to funding portals and that's the possible network effect. I'll tell you about that next. All right, now let's focus on the investor part of the ecosystem. An investor obviously is going to want to make money from some of these things. But also, for a lot of small investors, they're going to want to invest in projects with a social impact. So that's a difference. Some institutional investors are looking at this in different ways than the regular Joe investors who might be looking to do things that they think have social value, for instance, or are particularly fun. In the investor ecosystem, events, again, are particularly important. So organizations who throw events are definitely going to have something to do here. That's because, first of all, you have a big need to educate investors about these, about equity crowdfunding or securities crowdfunding. But also, there's one message that we got clear from almost everybody we talked to. And that's that investing 
is about people and about the team that you're investing with. So another interesting opportunity when it comes to the investor ecosystem concerns certification. We found that there's going to be a role for some firms who certify investors, i.e. say, hey, this investor is educated to this level. So funding portals, you aren't going to be liable for them when they make a mistake, for instance. So there's a lot of interesting space in the ecosystem when it comes to certifying investor. Now here's the network effect that I talked about. The network effect concerns managing investments. That's because when you invest in multiple securities crowdfunding projects, let's say you've got 10 of them, if you have to log into sites, to 10 different sites in order to manage these investments, then it could get difficult and cumbersome. If you're looking for, for instance, the marketing plan for 10 different companies and you have to go to 10 different places and there are these ongoing reports which are going to be required by the SEC happen at different times in the year, it's going to be hard to keep track of those things. So if there's one place that can provide investors with the kind of value that says, hey, you come to our site and we'll be able to, sh to give you everything that you have on your investments all in one place, that could definitely be a network effect in the sense that you'll have some sort of value as you build up, you'll have some sort of economies of scale as you have increased deal flow through the funding portal or whatever that service might be. So some of the key takeaways when it comes to investment, the investor part of the ecosystem is just that funding portals might want to have an investor strategy. That is, look for specific kinds of investors with specific kinds of education levels and income levels perhaps. because. The kind of investor you have is going to determine the kind of educational materials that you have to put out and also maybe the kind of liability that comes with running your site. Also, the management of investments is going to be a major opportunity. How people are going to log in and find all of their various investments and do their due diligence on them as these investments go on and on and on is definitely an area where services are going to be required. All right. So now you can take action. I'm gonna put the link here at the bottom of the page and then you can copy that link, paste it in your browser and that's gonna lead you to a full res uh, copy of the eco ecosystem map that we've created. So you can take that, save it to your hard drive. Then you can use it for reference later. Zoom in and zoom out of the different parts of the, of the map because there's more detail at each part of the map. Then share this with others. Share our map with others, share this post with others if you've gotten this video as part of a larger group of documents that we that we've put up on a blog or something, and share it so that we can build understanding in the ecosystem. Then send us feedback. We're looking for specifically feedback about the pitfalls of the system. What could ruin this system? What role should advisors play? How should they be regulated? How should ongoing reporting work? What would you like to see in ongoing reports? Also, how should education work in this system? All right, now I'm gonna put my contact info right there at the bottom of the page. So send me an email. I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to share this with our group. We'd love to hear from you as we create the recommendations for the SEC. Thanks for watching.